Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to evaluate this uh, integral here using partial fraction decomposition. Let's get started. Because this given rational function here is already a proper rational function, so we can already do partial fraction decomposition. And we may write this uh, function here as the sum of the fractions. So we have here a over 2x plus 1. So this is the fraction that corresponds to this factor here in the denominator. And then since we have here a repeated linear factor and the multiplicity is equal to 2, then we have uh, two fractions that uh, correspond to this uh, factor here. And of course, the numerators of those uh, fractions are just uh, constant. So we have here plus uh, b over x minus 1 and then plus another constant c over the square of x minus 1. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find these uh, constants here, a, b, and c, in uh, two ways. One is the standard way that is usually taught in the classroom, and the other is a fast technique in finding these uh, constants, uh, a, b, and c. Okay, a standard way to find the values of a, b, and c is first to multiply both sides of this equation by the LCD. In this case, this is the least common denominator. And multiplying both sides of this equation by this expression, we'll get here 7x squared minus 9x minus 4 equal to a times x minus 1 quantity squared and then plus b times 2x plus 1 and then times x minus 1 and then plus c times 2x plus 1. Now, one way to find the values of a, b, and c here is to expand all these products and find the coefficient of x squared and then coefficient of x and the constant term and equate to each of this, 7, negative 9, and negative 4 respectively. So we'll obtain the three equations with three unknowns, a, b, and c. So we can find the values of a, b, and c by elimination method or substitution method. But another way to find equations that involve a, b, and c is to just plug in some values of x into this equation. And a better choice for x is a value that will make this expression or this expression or this expression equal to zero. So if we want to make this equal to zero, so we can plug in x equals one. So by doing that, we'll get here. So when x is equal to one, we'll get here seven minus nine minus four equal to, so this becomes zero and this is also equal to zero. So we'll get here c times two times one, so that is two and then plus one. And this will uh, give us negative six equal to three c, which gives the value of c, which is equal to negative two. Now let's uh, plug in another value of x. So if we want this to be equal to zero, so we have chosen one already, so we can make this uh, factor equal to zero, but this is equal to zero when x is equal to negative one half. So we may plug in x equals negative one half and we'll get here seven times negative one half quantity squared. So that is one fourth and then minus nine times negative one half. So that is plus nine halves and then minus four equal to so this is equal to zero and this is also equal to zero. So we'll be left with this one. So that is a times negative one half minus one. So that is negative three halves quantity squared. So that is nine over four. And if we don't want to work with fractions, then we can multiply both sides of this equation by four and we'll get here seven plus 18 and then minus 16 equal to nine a. And this gives us 25 minus 16, so that is 9 equal to 9a. And we'll get a equal to 1. Now that we have plug in already values of x that will make any of this equal to 0, we can now plug in any value of x to obtain an equation that involves b. Of course, here the best choice will be x equals 0. So we can now plug in x equals 0 and we'll get there negative 4 equal to what is the value of a? a is equal to 1 times 0 minus 1 quantity squared. So that is equal to 1. And then plus b times 2 times 0 plus 1. So that is 1. And then 0 minus 1. So that is negative 1. Plus what is the value of c? c is equal to negative 2. And then times 2 times 0 plus 1. So that is equal to 1. So this will give us negative 4 equal to 1 minus b and then minus 2. 
which gives b equal to negative 1 plus 4, which is equal to 3. Therefore, we can already write our integral as integral of a over 2x plus 1. So that is 1 over 2x plus 1. And then plus b, which is equal to 3, over x minus 1. And then plus c, which is negative 2. So we have here negative 2 and then over x minus 1 quantity squared and then dx. Now, let us evaluate this integral. Now, this is equal to integral of 1 over 2x plus 1 and then times 2 dx and then times 1 half. And why did I write it in this form? So that we can easily integrate it because it is already in the form 1 over u and then this will be our du. Now, we know already an antiderivative of this fraction here and it's equal to 3 ln of absolute value of x minus 1. And then minus, we have here 2 integral of, we can write that one as x minus 1 raised to negative 2 dx, where we can already apply our power rule. This is just in the form integral of u raised to negative 2 du, where u is equal to x minus 1. So therefore, this is equal to 1 half integral of 1 over u du, so that is 1 half ln of absolute value of u, so that is 2x plus 1, and then plus 3 ln of absolute value of x minus 1, and then minus 2, add 1 to the power, so this is raised to negative 1, divided by that new power, which is negative 1. And then don't forget the arbitrary constant c. And we can simplify our answer by writing this fraction here as a plus 2 over x minus 1. Now, let me share with you a faster technique in finding the values of a, b, and c. So let's go back to our integral. So we have this integral here. And again, we know that we can write our integrand into this form. Now, what's another way of finding the values of this a, b, and c? So a faster way to find these values is to use what we call cover-up technique in finding the values of a and this c here. Why do we know that we can use cover-up technique in finding the values of a and c? Because as you can see here, the denominator of a is 2x plus 1, and if you cover 2x plus 1 here and plug in an x value that will make it equal to 0, this is defined. It's a real number. For the same reason, if we cover this denominator of c in our rational function, and if we plug in a value of x that will make that 0, then this remaining expression here is defined. So let's find the values of a and c by cover-up technique. So our a is just equal to the value of 7x squared minus 9x minus 4 all over, we covered the 2x plus 1, so we don't have that in the denominator. So the remaining factor in the denominator is x minus 1 quantity squared. And we plug in a value that will make this 2x plus 1 equal 0. And that is x equal to negative 1 half. So plug in x equals negative 1 half. And we'll get here 7 times the square of negative 1 half, so that is 1 fourth. And then minus 9 times negative 1 half, so that is a plus 9 halves. And then minus 4 all over negative 1 half minus 1 quantity squared, so that is negative 3 halves quantity squared, so that is 9 over 4. And we can simplify this complex fraction by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 4. And we'll get here 7 plus 18 minus 16 all over 9. And this is equal to 9 over 9, which is equal to 1. And to find the value of c here, so we cover this denominator of c, which is x minus 1 quantity squared. So we have to evaluate 7x squared minus 9x minus 4 all over 2x plus 1. When x is equal to 1, it's the value of x that will make the denominator of c 0. So that is x equals 1. So this will give us 7 minus 9 minus 4 all over 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3. So this is equal to 7 minus 13. So that is negative 6 over 3, which is equal to negative 2. Now, to find b here, so note that we cannot use cover-up technique because when we cover x minus 1 in our rational function, there will still be a factor, x minus 1, left in the denominator. So that will make the denominator 0 when we plug in x equals 1. So to find the value of b, we just plug in any value of x that is not equal to negative 1 half and positive 1. And the best choice for x here is 
x equals zero. So when x equals zero, so this left hand side here is just equal to negative four over one times negative one squared. So that is equal to one. Equal to, you have there a over one, so that is a. And then plus b over negative one, so that is minus b. And then plus c over negative one quantity squared, so that is plus c. But we know already the values of a and c, so this is just equal to 1 minus b minus 2 equal to negative 4. And this will give us b equal to negative 1 plus 4, which is equal to positive 3. So as you can see here, we got the same values for a, c, and b. For me, this is simpler and faster than the first technique that we used in finding the values of a, b, and c. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.